This is the Tata binding protein, a eukaryotic protein, a transcription factor that binds to which DNA sequence? TATA. -T -A. Right, that's why it's the Tata binding protein. It binds and recognizes the DNA sequence TATA, -T -A, and it's one of those transcription factors that brings RNA polymerase to the transcription start site on a DNA molecule. So this is TBP, crystal structure of it bound to DNA. I've shown that before. And we've also talked about the fact that Tata binding protein has this sort of saddle structure where there's a, it binds to DNA and when it binds DNA, it actually physically bends the DNA. And there are amino acids in TBP's stirrups. Those amino acids actually physically contact the nucleotides that TBP is reading. That's how it senses what the nucleotide sequence it's binding to is. It's by contacts between those amino acids in the stirrup domains, those loops, and the DNA sequence. So channel what we just talked about in terms of prokaryotic gene regulation and the lack O mutations, like the OC mutation. What would happen to transcription to us, or to yeast in this case, this is an experiment that I'll show you in a minute that's done in yeast, another eukaryote. What happens if you mutate the Tata sequence? What happens to transcription? There's a chance it won't happen. There's a chance it won't happen. What's TVP's role interaction with transcription? Is it positive or negative? Positive. It's an arrowhead. The binding of TBP turns on transcription. So if you mutate the Tata sequence into, say, TGTA, all of a sudden you've made a sequence that TBP won't bind because it doesn't recognize it, and then transcription, we would predict, would turn off of whatever gene this sequence is upstream of. So what we're going to look at is situations where we have, instead of TATA, we have TGTA in the promoter. And there's going to be some gene, and we're going to try to figure out whether or not it's being transcribed. This is the purpose of a reporter gene. And all this is a pretty simple concept. This is geneticists making recombinant DNA, that is, <coughs> combine a specific promoter, like a mutant promoter that we have here, with a specific gene that's easy to measure transcription of. That's all it means when we talk about a reporter gene. It's just a convenient, it's a protein that does something easy to measure so that we know whether or not transcription's occurring or not. And I hesitated on whether or not to include this because I want to get people, we'll see in a couple slides. I don't want to confuse the situation, but we'll see what happens. For Tata binding protein in yeast, it was known that if you make this mutation, TATA to TGTA, right there in red, that reduces transcription. So that was a, that's a fact. You predicted that correctly. What's interesting is that then scientists working with that TGTA sequence realized that they could find mutant versions of TBP that prefer to bind to TGTA. And that's what's listed down here. These mutant Tata binding proteins have compensatory mutations. So what's happening, and we've looked at this picture before as well, this crystal structure of TBP up here bound to DNA, which is right there. Those, there are two amino acids in the stirrups down here at the bottom. There are amino acids 194 and 205. Those are the ones that really make contact with the TATA sequence. Those are the ones that specify what sequence TBP is going to bind to. 
And if you change those amino acids to different amino acids, then you can change the DNA sequence that TBP recognizes. So that's what this second bullet point means. So you make two mutations to those two amino acids. You change here an isoleucine to a phenylalanine at position 194, and you change a leucine to a valine at position 205, and all of a sudden, you've made a TBP that doesn't like Tata, it likes TIGTA. I'll, I'll just stick to calling it TGTA. Separately from that, so that's, that's one thing. We can have compensatory mutations that happen in the protein that help it recognize new DNA sequences. Then this other weird thing happened, the third bullet point, which was somehow the scientists discovered that if you take off the N-terminal portion of the TBP protein, the whole start of the protein, if you get rid of it, then TBP, Tata binding protein, loses its specificity for TATA. So that means that not only are, briefly, it just means that not only are these two amino acids, 194 and 205, important for recognizing a DNA sequence, but so is the N-terminal domain. So if you delete the N-terminus, that's what that triangle N, delta N, or deleted N terminus, then TBP will bind OK to TGTA. So two different things. Point mutations in the stirrup and the presence or absence of the N terminus dictates whether or not this protein will bind and start transcription. So when I was an undergraduate, this was the task that was given to me in my first research experience at University of Oregon. My faculty member that I was working with said, I'd like you to, you being me, to make a mutant version of Tata binding protein that combines that absence of the N terminus with those two point mutations. So what do you predict would happen? We've got four different versions of TBP. We've got the wild type version. We've got the N-terminal deleted version. We've got the double point mutation, <coughs> isoleucine to phenylalanine and valine to leucine. And then we've got the two mutations combined. The N-terminus is gone, plus there's two point mutations. What I just said was that with the TATA sequence, wild type binds fine. <coughs> and if you, don't, if you have any of these mutations, those Tata binding proteins won't bind TATA. <coughs> wild type Tata binding protein won't bind TGTA. So what, what happens to these other three? Delta N, this is review. So you get rid of the N terminus, you get transcription. If you do the two point mutations by themselves in Tata binding protein, you get transcription. So that, that's the question mark, is what happens when you take those two mutations, do, would we get two plus? Do we get super transcription? Pardon? Yeah, that's the question. Okay, so this is where reporter genes come in. I need some way to measure whether or not transcription's happening. So the way this works is you have the reporter gene, here's the transcription start site on a plasmid that we can put into yeast. So up here in the promoter, one of two things happens. We either have a TATA or we have what? TGTA. So one variable is which promoter do we have? Do we have the wild type, TATA, or do we have the mutant version, TGTA? Downstream of that, we have, this is the part that I'm gonna be extra careful to make sure it's not confusing, the gene that encodes the enzyme beta-galactosidase. <laughs> beta-galactosidase is an enzyme. All that enzyme does 
is cleave a particular type of chemical bond, this one, in blue. So it breaks that bond. And what happens is normally beta-galactosidase is used in what situation? When there's galactose, beta-galactosidase breaks it into two simple sugars. That's like the gal pathway we watched the movie on today. Gal utilization. In this case, we use beta-galactosidase not because it has anything to do with what you watched for class today, but because it does this chemical reaction with a really simple substrate here, ONPG, which is a derivative of galactose. The value of using this is this molecule, ONPG, is clear. But when beta-galactosidase is present, what happens? It cuts this molecule into ONP, orthonitrophenol for you organic chemists, right? There's the phenol. There's orthophenol, orthonitro. That is yellow in solution. And galactose is a sugar. It's clear when it goes into solution. So why is this useful? Now I can see transcription visually because if Tata binding protein is binding one or both of those, transcription of beta-galactosidase occurs, translation of the messenger RNA into protein occurs, I've got beta-galactosidase, and then I just throw in some ONPG, literally, throw it into the tube, and if Beta-galactosidase is there, you get this reaction from left to right down there on the bottom. You go from clear to a little bit yellow to a lot yellow, and the amount of yellow tells me how much transcriptions occur. The amount of transcript that's produced correlates to the amount of protein. Beta-galactosidase that's produced tells me, is transcription working with the mutant TGTA promoter or the wild-type TATA? And here are the data. So again, the point of this is just to understand how the use of these reporter genes works, why they're useful. So in this case, all I want to know from this slide is, was our hypothesis, what was the answer? What happens when you combine those two mutations? What happens to transcription? So this was that new mutant. And terminal deletion plus the two-point mutations, it's got the highest level of transcription with the amount of yellow color being plotted on the y-axis. So more yellow is up here, it's more transcription. So yeah, combining those two mutations made Tata binding protein even better able to bind to TGTA, which is pretty interesting. So I was basically engineering proteins to bind new DNA sequences. Kind of fun. And then I went off and did totally other things after I got my biochemistry degree. But so this is reporter genes and why they're useful. Something simple like you can monitor the amount of yellow in a vial, that tells you something about the amount of transcription. And Tata binding protein plays a key role in this process. 